Hi YouTube, contradiction design here. Hopefully you can hear me, it's really loud in this room. All of these machines are currently rendering, so all the fans are going, and um, it's almost painful to be in here, but just wanted to update everybody on the render farm and kind of show why I need it. The biggest change is this machine now has my um, 3090s in it, so I've got two RTX 3090s, and I phased out all of the 10 series cards that I had. Without the RT cores, it was they were just not running very fast. Um, that's the render machines. This one here is the storage, so this has all of the hard drives, and um, all these PCs are networked together with simple um, unmanaged ethernet switches, and right now everything's on one gigabit. That's the hardware we're working with, and I'll show you my desktop here in a second, because I updated that as well. So this is my desktop setup. In the top, you can see my 3D printed Minotaur character sitting on the case. This is what it looks like with the side panel off, and that is the new RTX 4090. Here is the case before removing the old 3090s. And here is disconnecting the radiator for the hybrid model, removing the water-cooled one, removing the air-cooled one. This is just the empty motherboard. And there is the massive RTX 4090 and the beloved new power connector that the internet is all about. This is just a spreadsheet showing the specs for the parts in my render farm and in my desktop. Um, I'll just go through this real quick, but the render farm right now, including the workstation, is 10 GPUs total. I have one 2080 Ti. 830 series NVIDIA GPUs, and the one RTX 4090. Um, all NVIDIA, no AMD right now. So you can see the render um, one through four, and then six through eight are the are the actual worker names, which are like the stickers I had on the, on the cases. Most of them just have one GPU. One of them, the bigger case, has my old 3090s in it. Um, Render 8 is the open air mining rig frame that I have this desktop built in. Um, these cards are large, so I didn't have any more big cases, so I just uh, thought I'd put them on the open air rig frame, and that seems to work pretty well. Uh, my workstation is a one RTX 4090. It's a Zotac Amp Aero um, model, and it's stunningly fast for Blender. I have the 16 core 32 thread R9 5950X from AMD for my CPU. Um, and then over here I have the total speed listed. So um, FP16 compute, also known as half precision, is one of the only ways I could compare the GPUs for, for speed. Um, it's not even necessarily applicable to rendering because that uses more tensor core stuff. but that's getting into the weeds. So just for a comparison's sake, I used FP16 and went and found the um, speed data for all these cards and then added them up. So my farm, including my workstation, has 290 teraflops per second, which is trillion floating point operations per second. And so now I've moved the 3090s into a worker and the 4090s in the workstation. Um, so now, Basically, uh, I'm kind of back to the same deal where the workstation is a third of the entire speed, about 82 out of 290, but um, the rest of the workers are significantly faster now. They're almost as fast as the entire farm was before. So uh, the, the benefit and the reason to make a render farm is if you do a ton of rendering and if you're if you're sitting there like I don't know if I need this, then you probably don't. Um, there's plenty of services you can use to get cheap or free renders up to a certain point, and um, for most people, building this sort of setup isn't isn't practical at all. Um, mine, I I got these cards in a lot of different ways. Um, most of them mined in the last couple of years, um, and that's kind of the only way I was able to pay them off was putting them to work mining and, um, you know, they would pay themselves off and then 
the end goal was always to get a render farm set up. So luckily everything went well enough for long enough that I was able to do that. So today here we sit with this basically massive render farm and uh, I've been able to start doing some renders for friends and other YouTubers I've met. And uh, obviously anytime I have my own projects ready to render, this saves a lot of time. I just did 500 frames for a pretty heavy volumetric render. Um, 500 frames took this farm about 18 hours, 18 real-time hours total. So, uh, you know, on one on one desktop, say one 3060 Ti, which is 16 out of 290 times the speed, you're looking at you're looking at days and days of rendering. So if you only have the one machine, um, you either have to pause your rendering to continue working on a new project, or you have to just wait to work on your projects until the render finishes. So if you're in a production environment or you have a lot of different uh, people or different accounts that are needing renders, then you definitely will need to look into a render farm instead of just um, sitting around waiting for them to get done but that's a that's a quick rundown of the specs on a more technical level all right so here is an example of a scene that i'm running for a new friend i have found on youtube his name is mru studios and this is one of his projects that i'm helping render his final frames for for this kind of project this render farm is great because um, each one of my machines will work on a separate frame. And this one, it's looking like it may take up to half an hour per frame per machine. But um, I can let my render farm run while I'm working on other projects, basically. So this could take, even if it takes a few days or a week, it's not going to bug any of the work I'm doing because it's just kind of running in the background. So I'll show you how that works here. So um, the way I have this set up is each render machine just has Windows 10 on it. And I use the remote desktop connection app to sign into them. So I'll go to render one here. And you can see it's working on the first frame here. It's about a quarter of the way done. It says it's been seven minutes and it's got 20 left. And this one has the RTX 3070. So that just kind of shows you the sheer scale of rendering as far as computation power goes. I've already started the render on this one. So let's close out of this machine and then back to remote desktop. I'll switch to render two and hit connect. And this one does not have the file open yet. so. I have a shared hard drive that all of the machines access the same files from. So here I have the, um, the shared file. And then in this folder, the frames folder, I have that, that first frame zero that render one started working on. So I will open the blend file here. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other machines. So I always come into the preferences and make sure I have the right GPU selected. So this one is one 3060 Ti, and I don't use the processors normally because they're so much slower than GPUs that um, they'll just hold up the process. So I leave them out unless I need all the RAM. But since I opened a shared file that's been saved, all of the settings that I was using on the um, first iteration of the file are the same. So now all I have to do is start the animation and the frames will go to the same shared folder. So um, when I turn on um, placeholders here and turn off overwrite for the output settings, um, this iteration of Blender will look for any existing frames and then it'll come increment up one frame and then start rendering that. So you don't have to tell it which frames to do. It'll automatically find the most recently started one. And you can see here, now this is on frame one, render machine 
one is on frame zero. So it looks like everything's good to go there. Pretty crazy, but that's what it takes to get really, really cool effects. And that is why I built this farm. So now I'm just going to uh, breeze through the rest of my workers here and start them up the same way I did this one. I'm going to show the final render for this little clip of the F14 at the end of the video. For now, I'm just showing um, four of the machines rendering frames at um, 100 times the speed. And if you found this useful or interesting, consider subscribing and uh, leave a comment. And also go check out MRU Studios on YouTube. This is part of his work and I just helped him render. And he was gracious enough to let me use this clip in this video. So uh, click on the cards early in the video or check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Hope this was um, interesting to you.